Rules for noise levels and operating hours will be enforced for the Changu area, according to Balinese authorities. And tired of Jetstar, Batik Air has started flying from Perth to Bali round trip. Stay tuned for more details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is September 16th, 2022, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? <sighs> Beautiful. It is 30.5 degrees Celsius at 10.30 in the morning. The wind speed is 19.4 kilometers per hour, and humidity is 66%. Slightly cloudy, but... Another beautiful day up north. I hear it's raining in Ubud. Oh, too bad. And I hope the weather is good wherever you are. And if you're coming to Bali, remember, weather in Buling is always better. And it is the start of a busy weekend here in Kampung Bugis. People are going to be rolling in today. Brother-in-law, sister-in-laws, nephews, nieces, cousins, children, grandchildren. So <laughs> we have this seven-month pregnancy ceremony coming up and there will be a video on this if you're interested in culture i talked about this the other day and so stay tuned for that if you have not subscribed to the channel consider subscribing monday wednesday and friday videos let's get started what about the numbers the numbers are good and there's some good news about covid here and what's coming up on the horizon national new cases 2651 National recoveries, 3,915, and national deaths, 21. Bali new cases, 38. Bali recoveries, 44, and Bali deaths, 1. So the numbers are staying steady. We're down below 50 again in Bali and below 3,000 national-wide. Weekly positivity rate is, of course, the same, 8.14. And the daily positivity rate has dropped a little bit more, 7.48%. And according to recent News in the Jakarta Post, newly reported cases of the disease have fallen to the lowest level since March 2020. You remember back then? Wow. Okay. And this is according to the WHO's latest epidemiological report for COVID-19. Epidemiologist Windu Perdomo from Arlanga University said the country's been recording an effective reproduction rate, RT, number of less than one since the end of last month, and it is at 0 0.83 right now, and that is an indicator that the disease is slowing in Indonesia. Hospitals and deaths during the last COVID-19 wave back in early August remain relatively low. And he said, if we can maintain this situation for three or four more months, we could confidently say we're entering an endemic phase as long as no new <laughs> variations pop up. As of Thursday, Indonesia recorded a total of 30,441 active cases, 30% decrease from September 1st, when we had 44,434 cases. So good news on the COVID front. Okay, let's get to the main story, which is a follow-up on Changu, what's going on with that viral petition I talked about in the last video. And if you haven't seen that, it is right up here. Changu Noise Check Joint Team. So in a meeting at Bali Thotpol PP office on Wednesday, it was revealed that there is still a regulatory vacuum that regulates outdoor business activities. So the Bali province Thotpol PP responded quickly to this petition. It was amazing. Petition was out there and there was response right away. The head of Bali Thotpol PP, Dewa Nyoman Rai, Darmati invited the number of related parties in the Bali province and Barung Regency to discuss this issue about noise pollution in the Changu area. During this meeting, it was agreed that operating hours for outdoor businesses will be limited to one o'clock in the morning and that the noise level is going to be limited to 70 decibels. And I'll talk about 70 decibels and what that means in just a minute. And so today, there are supposed to be teams out checking on noise and things and wandering around <laughs> in Changu. So if you are in Changu today, you may see some people poking around. And that's what they're there for. They're there to see how things are going. 
Pak Darmani said that based on the information gathered in the field, it was admitted that noise had passed the 70 decibel threshold according to governor regulation number 16 of 2016 concerning environmental quality standards and environmental damage standard criteria. What is 70 decibels? Well, there's been a lot of talk on the internet now about what 70 decibels is. 70 decibels is generally as loud as a washing machine or a dishwasher. It's a moderate noise level. It's not considered harmful to humans. However, extended exposure to levels above 60 decibels can be considered disturbing or annoying. Repeated exposure to noise at levels of just above 70 can cause permanent hearing issues. And there's a link to information about the decibels in hearing down below, as usual. Pak Darmani said, look, there is no issue that this criticism is not valid, but on the other hand, the development of tourism has been going on and it's been very encouraging after the two long years of businesses failing, people not having work, hunger striking the island in various sectors. And so he said, we can't immediately close places of business. The foremost thing to do is carry out guidance to build a joint commitment to the improvement and development of tourism in Bali. The meeting said that there's a regulatory vacuum that regulates business activities outdoors ahead of the Badung Regency Tourism Office, E. Nyoman Rudiarta, said in the meeting that so far business activities indoors have been regulated by a circular issued by the Badung region in 2012. However, in the circular letter, business activities carried outdoor were not discussed in that circular. The Badung Tourism Office will soon revise the Badung Regents SE to include regulations relating to outdoor businesses. Those that violate the new regulations will be given strict action by Sapol PP and other officers. According to Pak Darmadi, starting today, they are going to be out socializing with the entrepreneurs, and he also invited the community to participate in maintaining order in the environment. If it's found that there's activities that are above 70 or businesses that go on past one o'clock in the morning, people are encouraged to report it to Sapo PP or other agencies. According to Pak Darmadi, the average at night for some of these venues was 82 to 85 decibels, far above the 70 that is regulated. According to a spokesperson for Finn's Beach Club, very big, very famous, very controversial place, they said that they will follow the rules and in fact, they already stick to a 1 a.m. closing time and they pay close attention to the rules and the environment and the local community as well. And the new Atlas Beach Club, which I talked about a number of times back, I don't know, a month ago or so, they said they will be following the rules closely and they respect the decision by Sapol PP. So we'll follow up on this story in the future. Very interesting. And now that there's been stuff going on with Changu, some people on the internet and social media are saying, it's time now, if in your community there is too much noise, it's time to report it while this is in the awareness of the authorities. And of course, you got people now saying, well, they should ban the chickens and the dogs. They should get them to stop. They make too much noise. And temples and mosques. And why don't we make this quiet like it is in my country? Guess what? This isn't your country. And dogs and chickens, for one thing, part of the landscape here. And in terms of mosques and temples, yeah, complain about that publicly and see where that gets you. And so that's enough about noise. Let's go on and talk about Airplanes. No, Jetstar, right? Well, a lot of problems with Jetstar for Australians who coming and going and getting stranded and having things canceled. Well, Batik Air is flying again from Perth to Denpasar and Denpasar to Perth. Batik Air reopens Bali Perth round trip flight route. So Batik Air announced the other day that they will once again operate scheduled flights from Denpasar to Perth. According to the airline's CEO, the inaugural round-trip flight from Denpasar to Perth was yesterday, the 15th, and there is one scheduled for tomorrow, the 17th, according to the CEO of Lion Air's subsidiary. So Batik Air is a subsidiary of Lion Air, and Lion Air has its own problems in Indonesia, which if you travel frequently here, you are probably aware of. 
Baltique Air is also offering a special price for one-way trip connecting the two cities, starting from 1.6 million rupees. Okay, no more information about that on here. If you know anything about this special, 1.6 million, that is pretty cheap. It's like just, a, what, $160. Compared to some of the prices I've been hearing, pretty cheap, but one way. Reoperating this flight route completes the airline's round-trip flights connecting Denpasar and Melbourne. Denpasar and Brisbane flights to other Australian cities will be gradually broadened in the future. And according to the CEO, operating this international flight is to accommodate the general public, tourists, and business people who we serve nonstop. So if you've taken Batik Air, let me know. How is that working? Leave a comment below so we can all see how that's working out. And here's a story, I'm going to keep my comments restricted on this one and listen to the story and you'll see why. Polda warning journalists and netizens maintain conduciveness. Head of public relations of the Bali police gathered dozens of journalists and social media managers from all over Bali at the hall of the Bali police headquarters in Denpasar with the theme, Netizen Gathering. The head of public relations hopes that journalists and social media managers can educate the general public so as to create conduciveness for Kamtibnamas in Bali. Kamtibmas in Bali. That is a mouthful. What is Kamtibmas? Well, according to Article 1 of the Law of the National Police of Republic of Indonesia, number 2, 2020, uh, 2002, the notion of kamtibmas is that public security and order are a dynamic condition of society as one of the prerequisites for the implementation of national development process. So in other words, not disturbing general public order. So Pak Bayu conveyed two things of mutual concern. First, the G20. Second, the pros and cons of rising fuel prices. Next month, he said, we will enter the peak of G20 activity. So far, there have been 27 out of 40 events held in Nusa Dua. The activities of the G20 presidency are highly expected to be carried out well and successfully. This international activity is one of the activities that can boost Bali's economy after being hit by COVID-19 pandemic. And so I've talked about this before. The government is putting a lot on the G20 summit and it coming off well in Indonesia looking really, really good. And of course, Pak Jokowi. According to Pak Bayu, the head of the Bali Regional Police, he said, before my assignment here, I came to Bali, I saw for myself what the condition was like. Kuta, which used to be the center of the crowd, suddenly became quiet. I invite us to take this opportunity of G20 to restore our economy. In addition to the question of the success of G20, the head of public relations also touched on the pros and cons of increasing fuel prices by the government. It is said in a number of areas of Indonesia, there have been resistance in the form of demonstrations. In Bali, there's also been re rejections of the price increase, but he said so far nothing has led to acts of disturbing Kamtibmas. He continues, the increase in fuel prices has been carried out by various efforts of the government, including the provision of direct cash assistance. Meanwhile, we from the police also distribute free basic necessities. The food we distribute is not much, but at least it can ease the burden of the community a little. He hopes that the whole community will work together with the government and security forces to maintain Kamtibmas. Journalists are expected to create positive stories to increase international confidence in Indonesia, especially Bali, as the venue for G20. The same hope is also for netizens, especially social media managers, to always calculate everything before posting. Let's work together to keep Bali conducive, he said. Take that as you will. And what about hotel occupancy in Nusa Dua, right? The site of the G20 summit. Nusa Dua area occupancy rate reaches 60%. ITDC President Director Ari Rispati said that, that the positive trend has been seen since June 2022. From June to July, the achievements were 60.10% and 65.37% in terms of occupancy. In August, the trend continued with an occupancy rate of 63.17%. This shows that the occupancy rate is relatively stable, even though the June and July 
holiday seasons have passed. And according to this article, he said, that's the height, June and July, and the August is already the start of the end of that. For me, I've always thought that August was the height, but maybe not. I've never actually gone by figures on that. Just my feeling from the years when I used to hang around the tourist areas, there always seemed to be everything was full in August. But according to Pak Raspati, when compared to the same period in August last year, there is a significant increase. Last year, there were only 6,935 people visiting the Nusadua area, and this year, 62,801, or a growth of 805%. According to Pak Raspati, the stable occupancy rate for the last three months is due to the increased frequency of holding national and international meetings in Bali, as well as other tourist activities here. In the next few months, a number of events have been scheduled to take place in the Nusa Dua area. This includes World Tourism Day events at the end of September, the International Federation of Purchasing and Supply Management World Summit 2022, the World Conference of Constitutional Justice in October, B20 and the Archipelago and Island State Forum Summit, and in November 2022, 14th Esport World and Bali Democracy Forum in December 2022. So a lot of stuff going on here and we get more and more people coming in for all these conferences and good news in terms of the economy. And what about transport and electric vehicles in Bali? Bali Tourism Office proposes electric vehicle routes in tourism areas, mainly Changu and Kuta. In these areas, it will be encouraged to use electric motors more with the aim of keeping the air around tourist attractions clean. What about those of us that don't live in tourist attractions? We're going to keep our air clean? The head of the Bali Provincial Tourism Office, Pak Pumayun, said that he had proposed the area for the use of electric motorbikes. He said, we propose it because tourism is meant to be of better quality. Yes, besides the traffic jams in Kuta, there's a lot of pollution. He said if people use electric motorbikes, there'll be a lot less and tourists will enjoy things more. He said not many tourists have been using electric vehicles. However, it is getting towards using those commonly in Bali, is it? And additionally, the Bali Tourism Office is preparing regulations related to the use of electric vehicles. He said we've made a socialization video on YouTube and we prepared four series. I haven't seen them yet. There's already education for foreigners on how to use this, and we are preparing a tourism ecosystem, one of which is to prepare Bali to be more sustainable in the future so there will be more value here. When Bali has implemented the use of electric vehicles, it's hoped that the level of air pollution will decrease so that the quality of destinations in Bali is higher, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. Tourists want a safe and healthy tourism destination. And I talked about the Gili Manuk Mengui toll road the other day, right? The first stone was laid and everything is getting started. Well, got a couple of stories on that. Unud Academics Value, Gili Manuk Mengui toll road can reduce accident rates. So according to Udayana University academic in charge of transportation, Professor Engineer Pakputu, he said on Monday that the the toll road is indeed one of the land infrastructure project developments that Bali has been waiting for. He said that several times over the past few years, feasibility studies have been done, but nothing has ever come to realization. He said road construction is an effort to overcome traffic problems through the supply aspect. He said considering the road area is still not ideal, even with this road, Bali does not have enough roads, according to a formula relating the number of roads, kilometers, and the number of vehicles. He said it means that we need other efforts to reduce the traffic load so that the need to build roads can be suppressed through a demand management scheme, namely by moving some road users to mass public transportation systems. That would be great, but are people going to use mass public transportation? That's an issue. People like to have the freedom of moving around. And so, you know, motorbikes, you get on one, you hop on it, you can go, you get off, you come back. There's not a lot of time left waiting for things. Now, here in Buling, we have had BMOs ever since I've been here. 
And those are pretty convenient and they run quite frequently. I see less and less full BMOs these days, however. Everybody's got motorbikes now, so I don't know. I would love to see public transportation developed here though, to get some of this congestion off the roads as well as, you know, mayhem. Professor Puchu said the Dempasar Gili Manuk route has long been known for its deadliness due to the high fatality rate. And yes, I call it the death road. I've called it the death road for years. I hate driving on that road. You have huge buses and trucks and motorcycles and cars, and they're zooming by at full speed. The 96.21 kilometer toll road from Gili Manuk to Mengli will also be able to significantly reduce the travel time from West Bali to South Bali and be good both for the movement of goods and people. The professor said the existence of the toll road also greatly impacts economic equity, especially to the West Bali area. And to be able to have a significant economic impact, of course, it's not enough to have just the toll road. It's hoped that the development of economic centers in the surrounding area will continue to increase. And one more on the toll road, because this is a big thing. Gili Manuk Mengwi Toll Road considered capable of developing tourism and industry sector. So the groundbreaking last week of the toll road received various positive appreciations from groups including the head of the Tabanan DPRD, Imade Dirga. He said, we're very appreciative to the governor of Bali for getting this going. He has always answers the feelings of the people from Tabanan who have been haunted by having the death row there. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's true, it's true. It is a death road. And he sees that the toll road will help develop tourism and industrial sectors. And so, a lot of benefits for the local people. He said, so the Jagat Kirti Bali toll road is the answer to facilitate traffic for the Tabanan community in particular and the Balinese people in general in driving in order to create a sense of security and comfort. Okay, and what seems to be a trend here, Boule behaving badly. Myth, more videos of women wearing kabayas and Caucasians appear in cars. <laughs> so in the last video, I talked about the two acrobatic lovebirds who were doing it in the car while it was moving and they were wearing traditional Balinese clothes. And by the way, Police still have no leads on them. The latest nasty video to come out, this time involves a woman wearing a brocade kabaya similar to Balinese kabaya, and the male lead actor was a boule. Well, the first video was only 29 seconds. This video is three minutes and 13 seconds. In the video circulating, the woman had sex with a white-faced man. It's in a stop car. Well, so at least they're not driving around doing it and taking the chance of smashing into people. Allegedly, the video was deliberately recorded by the couple. Regarding this latest <laughs> viral video, the head of Subdirectorate V of the Cyber Unit, Bali Police, explained that his party would conduct an investigation regarding the latest video. And in case you didn't see the last video, the, the two people created a commotion because one, they were wearing traditional clothes and so Bali Hindu organization got very upset and talking about how inappropriate it was. And so we've got two videos out of people doing it in their cars. I don't know, is this a new thing now? The one where they're driving and doing it, that's kind of disturbing because, well, I don't want to be smashed into by somebody who's focused more on down below than on the road. Uh, the second one is just kind of... <laughs> Silly, why are people videoing themselves having sex in a car and then putting it online? Who knows? The world is a crazy place these days. So that is it for today. I'm covering myself with this stuff now. I'm kind of paranoid about the Tomcats. This stuff is, I love this stuff. Uh, I don't know what you put on, but I put this stuff on now regularly because I've still got sores from Tomcat and so... <laughs> This is my friend. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. If you want to see a cooking video right up here at my wife's channel. I hope you have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday.